In the early 2000s, I found a very cheap 1980 Gibson Flying V in an American online store. Uh, it was in bad shape. It had a, a non-professional rebel flag uh, paint job. It had a Kaler. Uh, it had a locking nut and, and a lot of bad stuff on it. But I bought it for maybe eight or nine hundred dollars. It was not much. And at first, I had it professionally refined in Dakota Red because I wanted to do something special with it because it was a non-original guitar. I also found some parts on eBay like the original pickguard and stuff like that. Uh, but I used this as my main touring guitar for many 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 years and uh, I used a lot of studs and, and stuff like that so it had a beyond the back buckle rash. Um, finally now, uh, it's been retired for some years, I decided to um, have it restored and then I wanted to um, make it in original color that was available in 1980 and the production models could be bought in black, white, natural mahogany, uh, tobacco sunburst and also silver burst. Um, there was also some um, uh, custom color options like uh, cardinal red, candy apple red, silver sky, Bahama blue, a few green, um, you could have it in sunburst and sherry I think. Um, but I wanted to make it in one of those original production models so I chose the silver burst. Which by the way some people believe was a custom color but it was not. Um, then I needed a good luthier and I found uh, Thomas Berg that works at Berg's, Berg's Guitars in Sandviken and he takes a lot of effort to do uh, the guitars on or he does a job that is um, as close as it can be to uh, the original paint job. So thin paint, it's, uh, it's the right lacquer and stuff like that. So. Now I'm on my way to go and see what he has done to my guitar. So now we are in Sandviken and this is Mr. Thomas Berg, hello. And what do you do for a living? I uh, work as a luthier and build and repair guitars. Yes. And you have a guitar for me today yes. that you've been working with. Yes. Will you show me? Please. Yes, it's not the. Uh, well, we haven't put the pick guard on yet yeah. because we're going to change our pick up and stuff, but here it is. We're going to have the pick guard on soon. Yeah. And this is so cool because you made this a bit aged. Yes, uh, I put a, like a tint of amber on top to get mm. that green, yellowish. Yeah. And this looks quite exactly like the H ones to my eyes. But have you seen the old silver burst yourself? Did you study it for this or no? <laughs> I only <laughs> took your word and just made it. <laughs> That's kind of amazing because you looked at some pictures yeah, and, and then you managed to do this. Yeah, I don't think I've seen one before oh. in real life. Not the old ones anyway. And this is a quite fun detail that uh, uh, it's lacquered all the way up to the fretboard. Yes. Because they did not have the time to scrape bindings and stuff like that back at the Kalamazoo factory. That's cool. <laughs> I brought with me uh, two new guitars. Uh, or not new. Uh, <laughs> these are um, the first V's I ever bought. This is quite a cool one, it's a 1975 in natural mahogany and this color was, they made uh, the most copies, I think it's the most 70s uh, style, but it's to me it's a little bit furniture like, I don't, I never really liked this tint and we have, I don't know if you can see, the headstock has been broken so I want you to fix that break and 
to be able to hide it, we need to um, put some color on it. And then we might as well do a um, tobacco burst yeah, on of this. Course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> to keep the, the, the wood color and also because it's black, the tobacco burst uh, begins with a black hair. So it will hide uh, quite perfectly. And that's one of them. Um, original case there with the purple lining. And then this is the really expensive one, but I'm really cheap. Uh, the other one I know that has one is Kirkhamet. And this is an original 1976 Gibson Flying V. And they are so expensive now in this color. Uh, there's one uh, for sale in Europe for, I think, 20,000 euros now. So they are crazy. And I bought this for 9,000 euros. No, 900 yeah. euros. That is 9,000 no, Swedish yeah. pounds. I bought this for 900 euros <laughs> and, and they are there. So it was. But this also has a break. Um, it also did have a Kaler system once. And uh, we fixed that. Another loot here fixed it, but it has sunk. So my idea is to bring this, uh, to fix this brake, which is not stabilized, I think. It's still kind of stress. I think can bend a bit. Maybe we will have to put something in it. Yep. And um, I think about fixing the whole lacquer, maybe not a total reef in, but to touch it up and make it look like new from the factory. So mirror, mirror finish yeah. and do whatever it takes, but keep as much original black as possible. Yeah, that's possible. And I, this one has been refretted with um, medium, uh, nowadays medium jumbo frets, but I want it back to those fretless wonders. So I want this uh, 6130 Dunlop, which are almost dead flat, but they fit these guitars very well. So that's for you in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> if you want to. Uh, and here I have a new. My favorite pickups. It's a bit harsh, but it's good for the kind of metal I play. It's not active pickups, but still good for metal. Bunk and distortion. Yes. Yeah.
So let's take a closer look on this silver burst. Um, for those of you that don't know um, about these uh, early 80s guitars, um, this is a thing. The headstock changed in um, first in 71, but then in um, 1979, and it became this really rounded headstock. Um, some people call it the short headstock, but it's actually from here to here just about as long as the pointy ones. The pointy ones go to here, so this is just much wider. Um, the pick guard um, in 79, they changed it to with this curve, and this is a um, quite good um, sign when you sh search for guitars to see if they are uh, real or not um, because most people when they uh, put a new pick guard on they don't know about this this really round area here uh, this one has not got the original witch hat knobs but it came with witch hat knobs from the beginning uh, it's not original pickups and uh, the, the um, tunematic and the stop tail is not original. But when we researched how to do this silver burst, uh, I looked at a ton of pictures. Um, first of all, uh, most silver bursts are not this even in the burst. Uh, they are pretty poorly done. Uh, they can be really fat. Sometimes it's only black down here, but uh, some have it with a silver showing um, the nice examples had the burst coming in just over the pick garter um, they did nine bursts in um, 1980 so we have the front we have the back we have the burst on the neck and then we have also burst on the side of the headstock there are bursts under the wing, over the wing, and in between the wings. Um, this is also a way to tell if, if they have done it right or not. Um, it's pretty cool that they did um, uh, kind of try to spare money at the Kalamazoo factory uh, in, in the 70s and early 80s. But at the same time, they made an effort to do all this extra stuff. Um, the neck is painted all the way up to the rosewood fretboard. This is almost never the issue when you find uh, refinished ones. And sometimes sellers try to say that it's the original finish, but when you see the rosewood, the side of the rosewood uh, showing, then you know that that guitar is, does not have the original finish. Um, so this was a feature we really wanted to, to keep. And this is an original pickguard from that era, but it's not original to this guitar. Uh, I found the pickguard on eBay and it was very expensive actually. It, like most of the pickguards, it used to have pickup rings on it. Because, uh, I think it's because Michael Schenker put rings on his guitars. A lot of the players want rings, but it originally did, came without it, so Thomas Berg has filled the holes and uh, managed to um, put some paint on it, so it doesn't show really nicely done. The frets are original. Um, I'm a solo player, and luckily for me, the one that had it before was a chord player, so uh, there's somewhere here but absolutely nothing down here. And these frets are very flat, extremely flat. Um, I don't know if they used, call, used to call these ones the fretless wonders, but it's almost like playing a fretless. Um, and it takes a little bit of practice to, um, to, be to bend it. But you can. And as for the color on this one, um, it looks, 
you can see the green yellow tint in, in certain light um, and this is how they look with age um, because uh, the lacquer gets yellow and the flakes uh, kind of turn greenish um, now this pickguard actually has turned a bit green uh, by age so it takes out the green from here you can see it like this but Thomas did a really great job on getting the, the tint just right so it looks almost like a new one but it still has begun to age but in all it's more or less like the guitar was in um, 1980 when someone bought it the first time fantastic example it's really really lightweight